Hi, I'm Espen, and uh, welcome to this video series on what I've called spatial statistics or visualizing and analyzing patterns. There's within the JS community quite a lot of discrepancies on what we call analysis and what we call spatial statistics. Um, so you might be using this word differently than I will be in the following. But what I'll be focusing on is that I'll be focusing on describing patterns. So be it point patterns, how are they, how are point observations distributed, and how are patterns in attribute space. So this is a bit peculiar. If you're not from the remote sensing society, you'll probably be a bit and bewildered by the word attribute space. But basically what we do and what you do in remote sensing is that you see the distribution of data, of attribute data, also as spatial data. So we can analyze are there patterns in how attribute data are distributed. An example, is it so that if we have municipalities with a low educational level, they will also have a low income. We will talk about that there is a cluster in our attribute space that where we have low income, we also have low education. So that's what we talk about when we talk about patterns in attribute space. We talk about correlations between different types of attributes, but they are not correlations in standard, but they are situations where there are common observation types or common values. So they are describing patterns. We don't really test them. We just say, okay, can we see patterns? How can we quantify them? Then we have another section where we'll be testing patterns. We'll be using inferential statistics. So we'll be testing if there is a specific type of pattern. In general, we will always test against the concept of total spatial randomness, that observations are completely randomly placed in space. This is a bit foolish because there are almost no situations I can come of in geography where things are completely randomly distributed. Um, We'll be looking at points that are probably the most easiest to explain. We'll see, here are goldsmiths randomly distributed throughout the city of Copenhagen. Well, first of all, Copenhagen consists of a shape where we have a large element of a harbour in it, and they can't be located outside in the water. They will have to be on land. Goldsmiths are typically shops. They will typically need to be in a building. So they can't be located places where there are no buildings. So they can't be located in a park or in a nature area. So the test for randomness is in one way relatively silly because nah, there's not really much out there in real life that is random there is some ordering in it. Um, and we will then be talking about how we can compare different patterns to each other. The same goes to attributes. You might say, well, attributes, how can they be spatial? Well, let's, we'll be looking at Danish municipalities and we'll be looking at, are there clusters in them? Are they randomly distributed? That would say that income, is income randomly distributed throughout Denmark. So if we take any given municipality, does it have an even chance of having a high income or a low income independent of where it is located? Or is it so that municipalities in the Copenhagen region, they will have a higher chance of having a high income? So when we talk about patterns of attributes, you might think of it as saying, Okay, let's take all the income observations of Denmark, throw them up and let them randomly fall down into a 
municipality. So we would randomly assign a given observation to some municipality and compare to that. Is it then so that we find patterns? Is it so that we find clusters of high income and clusters of low income? And that's some of those tests we will be looking at. So the topics we'll be covering in general, patterns, we'll be talking about point patterns, and we'll talk about patterns of attributes. We'll be talking about describing them, and we'll be talking about tools for doing inferential statistics where we compare to what we call a null hypothesis. We will say, are they randomly distributed? And how far from randomly distributed are they? Because, as I mentioned, there's not really very many things in society that are randomly distributed.